situation and you chose to please those people, what would you do in the end when you stood before God? And God says, didn't I mean more to you than that? Well, Jeremiah 5 in verse 30, I believe this. I believe if you tell people the truth, they'll tell you when to stop. People don't always want to hear the truth. Some do and some do not. But never take that right. Never take that opportunity and never take the freedom and privilege away from someone by telling them a lie. Tell them the truth and give them the opportunity to accept it or to reject it. Well, Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 30, people will tell you if they don't want to hear it anymore. The Bible says, an astonishing and horrible thing has been committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely and the priests by their own power and my people love to have it so. But what will they do in the end? I mean, they love false doctrine. They love to hear something or that which is not true. But the question is, what are you going to do in the end? We'll stand before God condemned. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 4, I mean, there he talks about those who will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to a message that tickles the ears. But what will you do in the end? If you go to worship services and the preacher goes up there and he just tells you how good you are and how great you are and how much God needs you, what are you going to do in the end when you find out that really you are the one who needed God? Isaiah chapter 30 verse 9. This is a rebellious people, lying children. Children who will not hear the law of the Lord, who say to the seers, do not see, and to the prophets, do not prophesy to us right things. Speak to us smooth words. Prophesy deceits. Get out of the way. Turn aside from the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. They were saying, we don't want to hear about God anymore. Tell us nothing else about that almighty God. They'll tell you. You just tell the truth. Live your life in such a way to where you always speak the truth, regardless to what the subject or situation may be. Look over at Jeremiah chapter 44. See, we don't have to give in, and we don't have to give up, and we don't have to apologize for preaching what's, the, what's right and what's true. You know, there was a, an issue in Isaiah 5 where uh, they, were, they were, if you will, calling good evil and evil good. God says, woe to those who call good evil and evil good in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. We can't do that. If it's wrong, then we've just got to say it's wrong. If it's evil, we must say it's evil. We've got to hold fast to something. And I'm encouraging you to hold fast to God and to never give up. We don't have to give up. We should refuse to give up. In Jeremiah 44 and verse 15, Then all the men who knew that their wives had burned incense to other gods, with all the women who stood by a great multitude and all the peoples who dwelt in the land of Egypt and Pathros answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not listen to you. The point that I'm trying to make is people have the right to make a choice. And so if they choose that they don't want to serve God, well, you still teach God's word and truth. If they say, we don't want you around us because you're a Christian, well, they have that right, so be it, allow them to choose. But you hold fast to what you know is right and what you know is true. Stay steadfast and immovable and never give up and never give in. We don't have to give in. Brethren and friends, if we're holding fast God's faithful word, we're on the side of right and on the side of righteousness. And we must stick with the Lord. Brethren, say this. To your friends, if your friends say to you that uh, uh, I would like to have a Bible study, and you sit down with them and you try to teach them and educate them on what thus saith the Lord, and your friends say to you, well, I don't want to talk about God's word anymore. Would you be so sound and so strong as to say, if we can't talk about God's word, then what can we talk about? It's about souls. It's about lives. It's about the responsibilities of humanity. And it's about our final judgment with God. Don't give in and don't give up. Though you feel discouraged at times and you feel like you have to give up and give in, I encourage you to stick with God. Revelation 2 in verse 10, listen to what Jesus says. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. And you and I might say, okay, God, I, I, can, I can deal with the suffering, but what, what kind of suffering? Well, he gives more information. Indeed, the devil's about to throw some of you into prison. Okay, Lord, I, 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 think, I, can, I think I can deal with that. And it goes on to say that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days, a complete period of time. Well, all right, Lord, I, 
I think I can deal with that. And then it says, be faithful thou unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. And when someone says death, for some reason we start thinking to ourselves, wait a minute, I don't want to die. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. We have to die in order to go to heaven. Stay faithful to God until the day that we leave this earth. Never give up and never give in. Be like those saints who love their lives so much, even to the point to where they were willing to give their lives for Jesus. They were willing to give their lives for God. And they spoke of God. They gave a testimony of God. And yes, they were martyrs in the first century in regards to this, but they still hold fast. They held fast God's word, faithful and true. And they looked forward to the day when they'd be in heaven with God. I really believe, brethren, that, um, that as much as we wrestle with this life, when we get into heaven, we're going to look back and wonder why we clung so hard to this life. You know, God has prepared a place for us if we just hold fast His faithful word and stay true and stay sound and stay right with God. The reward in heaven is absolutely incredible. The Bible says so. In Revelation 14 and verse 13, he goes on to say, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works will follow them. What a great passage of Scripture. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, for their works will follow them. You know, Here's an interesting idea. Go to Rebel, uh, Hebrews chapter, chapter 11 and verse 5. If we were to look back at a man named Enoch. Now, Enoch was a man that lived in difficult times. You can recall reading back in the very beginning of time that God had made man, and after making man, he was uh, uh, sorry that he had made man, the text says. God repented that he made man, and he sent a flood to destroy man. Now, Enoch lived in those times. Enoch lived in those days with those horrible people, and so did a man named Noah. Now, Hebrews 11 verse 5 says, But Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had the testimony that he pleased God. Well, what made Enoch stay true? You know, we can't use the excuse that, uh, that well, you know, times are hard and God understands. No, we can't use that excuse. Enoch lived in those times. And in verse 7, by faith Noah, divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark uh, for the saving of his household, by which uh, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. He didn't give in. Noah held fast God's faithful word. Lot stayed true to God. How did he stay true to God in that land of Sodom and Gomorrah? You just have to make up your mind to do what's right, to stick with the Lord, and to never give in. You have to make your mind up. Sometimes we are wishy-washy and we go backwards and forwards and trying to make a decision to serve God. Should I keep God first or should I go against God? You have to make your mind up. You cannot be tossed to and fro. How important is God to you or how important is your soul? Look over at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Here's one of those things that holds on to us, one of those things that, that, uh, that weighs us down. And that is this. We as human beings, as, as we know God's word, we've read God's word, and God talks to Christians. And so members of the church here, here God is saying to us that uh, I will never remember your sins anymore. You repent of your sin. You make your life right with God. You've come to God in baptism. You, you are right with God. God says, I, re I remember your sins no more. Why can't we forgive ourselves? If God will forgive us, why can't we forgive ourselves? Paul says in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, Brethren, I do not count myself uh, to have apprehended it, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. How could Paul be the great apostle that he is and that he was if he keeps on reaching backwards into the plow? How can he do the things or how, how can he have accomplished the things in which he accomplished if he's always reaching backwards? You've got to stay forward. Keep your eyes on your prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and never give up. Never give in. Never stop. Stay faithful. Stay sound and stay true. Paul says forgetting those things that lie behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, those things which are in front of us. In verse 14 he says, I press on toward the goal, the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He keeps pressing on. He keeps going. He 